everybody, and welcome to Church Online. We are so excited that you tuned in today because God has something so special for you. If it is your first time tuning in, you are our VIP guest. So please text the word VIP to 912-244-8447 so that we can keep you connected with all God is doing here at Free Point Church. Please like and share this message because it could be the very thing, the very word that God has to transform your life and someone else's. So prepare your hearts for what God has today. Uh, today, I'm excited about the word today. We're going to begin in uh, Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. And when you get there, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. All right. We still get there. We'll wait. Pastor's favorite phrase, come on, somebody. While they're turning there, how many of you uh, watched Georgia win last night? Oh, yeah, we got some Georgia fans in the house. That defense is something serious. Boy, uh, the quarterback had nowhere to throw the ball. You're talking about wide on rice, those cornerbacks are on them. Are on them. If you no football, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then just bear with us. We're almost, people are almost to Philippians. Uh, <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Let's read it together. The Bible says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others, how? Better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but what? Also the interests of others. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. I pray, Lord God, that your word will be seasoned, Lord Jesus, with love and with mercy and with grace. Lord Jesus, that as it goes forth today, Lord, that it will bring healing, that it will bring hope, that it will bring life to people, that it will bring unity to the, your church today, Lord God, and that you will be glorified in this. Lord, I present myself as a, as a vessel for you to speak through, Lord Jesus, may every word come, come, that comes out of my mouth, Lord, be directed and guided by you and you only, Jesus. Lord God, help uh, every word to come out of my spirit, Lord Jesus, and bypass any carnal reasoning, but just straight out of my spirit, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. 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 So today, I want to talk to you. From a message entitled, On Mission with a Mask. <laughs> Watch out now. Don't, don't get mean now. On Mission <laughs> with a Mask. On Mission with a Mask. These little things right here, since uh, March, has, uh, has did uh, some, some, some damage to lives. Uh, has, has divided people, has divided communities, has even uh, been used of the enemy. He's found an opportunity to even use this to bring division in the, in the church. And uh, so today, I think the Lord has given me his perspective. Guys, y'all, we can hear y'all pretty good up here. So... Uh, no, I know y'all are getting it right. Thank you so much. I know our online church really appreciates it. Thank you, Jesus. They're trying, guys. They're, they're working with a new, a new system for the first time. So, um, hallelujah. I put extra hairspray on to get all the extra sprigs because of the, uh, the high-def cameras. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But today, the Lord is going to help us maybe see this in a light that maybe we've never seen before. 
And, uh, and through that, uh, it's going to bring unity um, to us, to our community, to our church. church. When I say our church, I'm talking about the church as a whole. Because not only will we be watching this and listening to this today, but people in other churches and other cities uh, follow our church and our ministry here. So I'm believing this is going to help people all over. Amen. So on a mission with a mask. So when you and I got born again, well, let let me start off by saying here in our opening text, the Apostle Paul pretty much points to the importance of us taking care of one another. He points points to the point of us, the importance of us, excuse me, giving preference to each other. And uh, by saying, don't look out for your own interests, but look out for the interests of others. Uh, be like minded. Uh, he, he, he encourages us to uh, seek after comfort of love, seek after the fellowship of the spirit. He, he encourages us, us to everything we do. Don't let it be done with selfish ambition or conceit. But everything we do, let it be done in lowliness of mind. What does that mean? That means that we take what we think, we take our will, our desires, and we, and we put it up to the word of God, and we bring it to the Lord in prayer, and we say, God, what do you want me to do? And is this, is this how you think about this situation? And what, what's your perspective? And so uh, the Apostle Paul is really encouraging us to humble ourselves for the sake of unity. And I'm getting a, uh, something here. Somebody could help me. I'm getting a ring here. Um, sorry, guys, I, I, it breaks up my train of thought. And, uh, but, but the Apostle Paul is really encouraging us as the body of Christ to seek after unity and to strive for unity. And, and the only way unity can be attained anywhere is for even in a marriage, it don't matter where, it's for people to prefer each other above themselves is the people to make decisions, selfish decisions, and look out for each other. It's like that in a marriage. Elizabeth and I call it. Uh, uh, we try to outserve one another, and what that looks like in a marriage is is when when both parties get home, husband and wife get home um, from a long day of work, and there's there's food to be cooked, there's dishes to be washed, there's laundry to be done. Uh, when it stares you in the face. Uh, The husband doesn't look at the wife and say, you know, I don't feel like doing it today. Would you do that? But the husband runs to the uh, kitchen and runs to the sink and starts washing the dishes because he knows it will make it will make uh, it take the load off the wife. So Elizabeth and I, we we live that way. If something needs to be done, if we can do it before the other person, we rush to it because um, we know it'll help. And that's, that's why we have the best marriage on the planet. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're so unified. It doesn't matter what the enemy throws our way. We overcome every time. Amen. Yeah. So the Apostle Paul is encouraging us here uh, with that. And, and then I want us to keep reading in verse 5. Because today we're going to be looking at Jesus as our example in this. And also the Apostle Paul as our example in this for us to imitate or follow. And here the Bible says that, says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of what reputation? No reputation. Taking the form of a what? Bond servant. What is a bond servant? Uh, someone who is, who is bound to serve another person with, without payment. So, in coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he, he, what did he do? He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, that at that name of Jesus, every knee should bow, those in heaven and those on the earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to glory of God the Father. This is so amazing because Jesus, even though he knew that he was God in the flesh, even though he knew who he was, he knew he was the Son of God, even though he knew that God the Father created everything seen and everything unseen through him, Hallelujah. He humbled himself 
and became a man, left his place of glory, was born in a man, uh, put his glory, pushed, put it aside, and came and became 100% man so that he could be obedient to the call of the Father upon his life, and which was uh, to sh- serve mankind by shedding his blood on a cross so that you and I could have life, so that you and I could be born again, so that you and I could have eternal life, so that you and I could be children of God. Jesus humbled himself, became, became a be, obedient to the Father, even unto death. And because of that, God exalted him, amen, and gave him a name above every name. Humility is, is, is God loves humility. He love, humility is the opposite of pride. Humility is, 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 is yielding and submitting one's will to the will of the Father. Amen? And God loves humility. The Bible says that where God will find someone who will humble themselves to him, God says he will, he will reward them and he will, he will exalt them. And he did that with his son. But he said those who are prideful, what does he do? He resists the pride. Come on, he resists the proud. And we see that with Lucifer in, 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 uh, in the beginning. He got kicked out of heaven because he thought his way was better than God's way. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's not us, amen? But Jesus humbled himself. Jesus even said this in Matthew 20, verse 26 and 28, when he was teaching his disciples about the importance of humility and what true greatness looks like in his kingdom. He told them, he says, if you want to be great, you must be willing to be a slave. If you want to be first, you must be willing to become a servant. And then he says, before the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom. Those who are great in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Those who are who are uh, who God gets to exalt are those who are willing to lay down their life. For, for, for the will of God and the purpose of God and the plan of God. Jesus said things like this. If you want to come after me, you must first deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. What happens on crosses? People die on crosses. And this is something God is calling us to do daily. God is calling us as disciples of his to die to self Daily is that when we get up in the morning, that we recognize that the call of God requires us, commands us to deny self, to put self last so that he can live in us, so that he can live through us, so that so that your co-worker, your family member who is lost, who is hurting, who is broken, so that when you come into their presence, they get love, they get kindness, they get gentleness, they get selflessness, they get Jesus. Hallelujah. God's called you to be the light of the world. And the only way Jesus can shine through you and I is if we put ourselves on the back burner, on the, on the back, so that he can be in the front. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody say, Jesus, shine through me. Jesus. Come on, somebody say, Jesus, shine through me. Jesus, shine through me. Hallelujah. Now, I, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the mass. Uh, uh, on a mission with a mask. On a mission with a mask. God's giving you a mission. God's giving you, as a Christian, God's giving you a ministry. And it's a ministry of reconciliation. Your job is to reconcile men back to the Father. Your job, my job, is to train you and equip you and encourage you to, for this ministry. And then when you go out there, you, you, know, you know what to do, amen, and how to do it. And you're encouraged to do it. But God has given you a ministry of reconciliation. Our job is to go out there and say, hey, this is what Jesus did for me and my family. God loves you. He sent his son to die on a cross for you. You, uh, 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 He has a plan for your life. He loves you so much. Can I introduce you to you? That's all of our job as a Christian. We have a mission. God plucked my wife and I in 2017 
uh, took us three hours away driving time. Now, if you were Randy in a, in a plane, you might get there a little faster, maybe 30 minutes. Yeah. But, uh, but three hours driving time plucked us up and planted us in, in, in Savannah, Georgia, because he has a mission for us. And we've been on that mission for, for three years. Hallelujah. But God, you have a mission. You have a mandate. Amen. And it requires us to humble ourselves so that people can experience Jesus through us. Now, our church uh, is a, is a uh, spirit-filled church, and, and we're, we're not ashamed of that. Amen. We don't hide that. Uh, the scripture that this church was birthed out of was John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14, where Jesus said, He who believes in me, the works I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do. So, because I go back to my father. And so, uh, so this church was birthed out of that. And we believe that God has called us and equipped us with his spirit to go out and do just like he did. To heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. Because we believe that, uh, uh, that's what happens when we come together. That's what happens when we go out on, on the street. People have been healed of cancer here. People have been healed of arthritis. People have been healed of all kinds of stuff. Uh, severe migraines, uh, allergies, you name it. There's been miracle after miracle and almost every week. If there's a need in here, once the gospel is preached and people put their faith in Jesus, they leave out of here totally healed and totally whole. So with, uh, 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 because that's who we are, that's what God has put us in Savannah to do and to accomplish. And that's our, that's our message. Um, these masks, are, our faith are not in these masks to protect, to protect us. Um, when COVID-19 first started, you know, around March, and um, we were encouraged by, by the governor of Georgia and, and, uh, to, uh, for businesses, you know, for two weeks. No, I think it was two weeks, but they ended up being, I think we were closed down for six weeks. You know, closed down the church. They used the word, let's flatten the curve help us. Well, as a church, you know, we want to do everything to help. So that's what we did. So for six weeks, uh, that's what we did. We went to church totally online. And, uh, and yeah, so we did that. So once we got the okay to come back, that was our way of honor and authority. Once we got our way to come back, uh, we did that. And really, not one time did, did I encourage people at that time to wear a mask, right? Because, you know, how we operate, you don't come here and get sick. You come here and get healed. Amen. I don't carry sickness. I carry the power of God in me everywhere I go. Jesus told, tells us in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you authority over all the power of the... Or excuse me. I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. I believe that. I live by that. And so because I believe that and I live by that, and because this, it, it, it would not make sense for people to come in here and be healed of cancer, but then leave out of here with COVID-19. Son ain't right about that. It wouldn't make sense for someone to come up here and be healed, healed of whatever and then and leave out of here sick. It just don't happen. And, and God has promised me. There's been times that I've prayed and the Lord has shown me things in the spirit. One Sunday morning when we were praying with the serve team, the Lord showed me that a, a big, like this big bubble over this property. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I, you know, this, I got you covered. You're protected. How, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. I'm covered. Thank you, Jesus. I'm covered. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. Hallelujah. So because I believe that, this was not that I'm, I'm not against this at all. Um, actually, I'm, I'm more for it now than, than, than ever, and I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. But because of that, I never wore one of these, nor did I encourage you all to wear one of these for months because our faith is in the Word, right? Um, well, then something happened. Um. Myself, along with two other, uh, one, two, three, uh, a few of us in leadership tested positive for COVID-19. Somebody said, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Somebody say, what about the healing stuff, pastor? 
Thank you, Jesus. How many know the Bible says weapons will be formed, but they will not prosper? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It was formed against us, but it didn't prosper. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, some of us in leadership uh, tested positive for COVID-19. And uh, which really don't matter, but for those who, who were just wondering, and for those in the community who have been talking, you know, I, I want everyone to know that I'm, I'm about 99.9% sure that uh, it didn't happen during a time where we came in this room and we worshiped the Lord together. But we do do life together outside of here. Amen? Because we're a family. So uh, we test the positive of COVID-19. I quarantined for two weeks. We didn't have church in person for two weeks. Now, before then, I want you to know that this room was filled with people before that happened. I mean, we were before COVID-19, we were already planning to go into two services after Easter. That was the plan. And then, of course, COVID-19 happened. But then after we come back to church, the church was growing back in numbers to where we, we started having those conversations again. Well, once we tested positive for uh, COVID-19, uh, we closed the doors for uh, two weeks because I wanted to quarantine with my wife. And then uh, Pastor Daniel and uh, Savannah quarantined. Pastor Daniel quarantined for a month. That's a long time to be in the house. So Pastor Daniel quarantined for a month, him and, and Savannah. And uh, so that, that's what we did. And then we had someone... Who, were, who was elderly on our leadership team, uh, Peggy Trainer, who was a mother of this church, uh, who we love dearly. She went to heaven at 73, 70, I think 74 years old. So once that happened, is it okay that I'm being transparent? Because I want everybody to be clear yeah. of what's going on, where we stand, and where we're going. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so when, when Peggy went home, that knocked the breath out of us. Even though we know she's in heaven and we know she, her and Jesus probably has been talking about it for a long time. And probably Jesus said, hey, you want to come on up here? And I'm sure she said, yes, I'm coming. Uh, uh, but so anyway, so when she went home, uh, I think it, that put a spook in people. Because when we come back to church, church didn't look the same as it did before. As far as people coming in person. And so... Uh, through the process of several weeks since, since that has occurred, spent a lot of time in prayer and having conversations with some people and families who haven't made it back to church in person. The Lord has, has, uh, has given me an understanding about this that I haven't had before. And this is the understanding that God has given me. The majority of people, even Christians, I would say, or I say a good, good numbers of people have a lot of confidence in these masks. A lot of faith in these masks. And really believe that this, this helps them, this protects them, or this may protect them if they, if they were to get sick from maybe spreading it to a family member. So because of that, um, they wear them and it makes them comfortable when people around them Wear, wear the mask. But because I haven't encouraged it, and because the majority of us, including myself, for, for months, did not put emphasis on this because of how, we, how I believe, uh, people haven't felt comfortable coming to church. And so this is where it really got me. When I was having conversations with people and they were telling me, yeah, you know, uh, we were in Walmart earlier, but we haven't been to church, you know, in months. And, and immediately, you know, I was like, you're in Walmart? Like, you feel safe in Walmart? But not in church. And then, you know, people have told me, yeah, you know, I just got through working out at, you know, at the gym. You know, but you feel more safe in the gym than you do at church. And, and people have been everywhere and all over the place in Savannah. But, but many haven't come back to church and they feel more comfortable in those places. Why? Because of this. Because in those places of business, these are, these are mandated. And so because they have so much confidence in these, they feel comfortable going to Walmart, going to the gym, 
going to the grocery store, but not to church. And so God started dealing with me about it to tears because I love people. God sent me here for people. I love people. And I know I've had conversations with people where they told me, they said, Pastor, I, I'm not doing so good. I am piercing spiritually. And they, they honest with me. They said, I, online churches, that doesn't do it for me. They said, but I just don't feel comfortable coming to church when the majority of people choose not to wear a mask. And so they haven't been back in church. And so after I've had these conversations, I started spending time in prayer. The Lord started showing me this. And the Lord started reminding me, you have a mission. And the life I've called you to is to reach people. And you have to be willing to reach people where they are. If you're going to reach them. Amen. Jesus did that. He became all things to all men. The apostle Paul did that. I'm going to share this because of time. I, uh, we're not going to read it, but I want to encourage you. And I want, I want to stop and say this. Uh, this isn't political. Like, this is not a political thing uh, or, a, or a whatever thing. This is, this is what Jesus has shown me as the pastor of Free Point Church. And this is why you see me wearing a mask in here now. So, um, so I want to encourage you guys to go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 9 if you want to write, write it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 through 23. And this is interesting because I, I wanna, I'm going to paraphrase what happens here. So the, the Apostle Paul is on a mission. Somebody say mission. mission. To take the gospel to the four corners of the earth. God, he, he took it to the Jews, but primarily to the Gentiles. And so God comes through Timothy's hometown. And you got this young man who has a call of God on his life. And so Paul says, Timothy, I want to take you with me to go minister to the Jews. But, but there was an issue. Timothy had a father who was Greek. He had a mother and grandmother who were Messianic Jews, meaning they were born again. They, were, they served Jesus. And, uh, and so the grandmother and the mother are the ones who had the spiritual impact on Timothy and was raising Timothy up in the faith. Sounds, sounds a lot like today in many, many homes. Amen. But because Paul knew that the Jews that they were going to minister to knew that uh, uh, Timothy's father was Greek, then there was a good chance that he had not been circumcised. Somebody say, ooh. <laughs> so Paul knew that in, if Timothy was going to go to him, to carry out the mission of Christ, to preach the gospel, to preach Jesus to the Jewish people, if they were going to even have an ear to preach to, then Timothy was going to need to get circumcised as a grown man. Somebody say, ouch. But Paul knew and Timothy knew that the gospel, their life was not about them. Paul through, inspired by the Holy Spirit, even in Galatians 2.20 says, For I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He didn't just write that to the churches. He lived by that. And so if Timothy was going to be a mentee of his, if he was going to do ministry with him, he was going to have to live that way too. That if it, that if it meant that he was going to have to be circumcised in order to go with Paul to take the, the gospel to the Jewish people, then he was willing to do that. Thank God that's not, we don't have to do that today to reach people on Wilmington Island. Come on, somebody. We don't have to be circumcised. Thank you, Jesus. But hallelujah. But he was, he was willing to do that, to take the gospel to Jesus. Because it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that is the power of God unto salvation. And Paul says this. And I want you, this is the result of that. Because he was willing to do that, the Jewish people opened up their ears to what they had to say. And because they did that, the gospel was preached to them. And because the gospel was preached to them, this is the outcome of this. It says in... Um, Excuse me, I gave you the wrong scripture earlier. 
It's Acts 16, verse 1 through 5. But in verse 5, it says that the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in numbers daily. Because of the gospel, because people heard the gospel, because people were were in a place where they could experience the power of the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for online. We have we 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 just invested um, around eleven thousand dollars to enhance our online church for people who can't get here, who are part in other places, and people who, who are traveling, who are working, and they're missing church. And, and I thank God that God's prayer and God's power is not limited through a camera, but people get healed every week through that camera. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, it, it just it can't compare to being in here, worshiping God together, hearing the gospel, and, 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 and experiencing the presence of God in a, in a physical corporate setting. And people need that. People at Free Point Church, they need to be here. They need to be here. Come on. Yeah. They need to be in this church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to share this uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse, I want to read verse 19 through 23, the one I gave you guys earlier. I want us to look at that together. Because this is where these guys were coming from. This is how they lived. These great apostles. They said, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all. That I might win the more. And to the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who were under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without the law, not being without law toward God, but under the law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have, I have become all things to how many men? Why? That I might all means save so. Now this I do for the gospel's sake. For whose sake? Why do I wear this mask on Sunday? For the gospel's sake. Because I want people to be in church. That I might be a partaker of it with you. So the reason we're encouraging these now, and I want to say this because this come up in a conversation. I know who I am in Jesus. I've been serving Jesus long enough, and I've seen God do some amazing things long enough that I don't doubt God's power and God's protection and God's ability to do what he says he will do. But I've heard, I, you know, I've seen a conversation and it, it come up that uh, you know, there's, it made me, led me to think that there's people who think that I'm encouraging this now because uh, Peggy went home to heaven. And because, well, now you are encouraging this because it hit home and, that, and when you, when you should have been doing this uh, you know, months ago. And so I just want to clear the air for everybody. Let everybody know that that's not our why. That our why is we're trying our best to become all things to all people. That we might by all means save some for the gospel's sake. Amen. Because this ain't about me. I want you to experience Jesus, the anointing on my life. When I get around some of the elderly people in this church, if they're wearing a mask, when I get close to them, I put this on. Not that I think I'm going to get them sick, but because I, I want them to feel comfortable. I don't want them to be distracted. I want them to receive Jesus from my life. Somebody say, come on, Jesus. Me and, uh, me and Pastor Daniel, and I'm not saying this, I'm just, anyway. 
So we, uh, some of us on the serve team, a few, uh, a few weeks ago, was it last week, last Saturday? Thank you. We, we did something called COVID caroling. And we went and visited some of the families that haven't been to church in, in a long time because they're elderly. Maybe they have underlying health situations or whatever the case may be, have concerns. So we went and visited them. So what we did was totally unannounced. We went to their house. Don't worry if you're a guest and you put your information on the card and we won't show up. These are people who have been coming for a while. We knew they would. We, we wouldn't scare them away. Come on. But uh, anyway, so we, went, we come unannounced, and I, and I called them and said, Hey, if you want to peep out of your window, surprise, we're here. And they're like, well, let me put a shirt on, you know. Let me, let me. <laughs> and so uh, some of them were opening up their windows, you know. And so Pastor Daniel had his guitar, and he played, and we sang a worship song. And then we prayed over them uh, from a distance, and then we left them some cookies. And I, I see this is why this is why I'm talking about this, okay? Because we went to one house, a family who we love, that's been a part of this church from the very beginning, and the and the wife has had um, some health concerns, and and uh, uh, so them as a couple, they made a decision to not go out much and stuff like that. So they've been at home. So we we go to surprise them. The wife comes out. Ooh, I'm. A, I'm going to cry. The wife comes out and she gets her lawn, lawn chair and she sits down in the front of her lawn. And she just starts crying. And she says, I've been wanting to come to church for a long time. She said, I miss y'all. I miss church. And she and this family is, is online every Sunday and every Wednesday. And probably watching now. Hey, we love you. But. Uh, she, she was crying, and she said, I've been wanting to come to church so bad. And she said, uh, and this is, so this is an answered prayer. God knew, knew I wanted to come to church. And man, it broke me. It broke me. Of course, when I left her, her house, I said, God, I'll wear two masks. I'll wear three masks. I'll wear, I'll wear a suit and sweat. I'll And then we went to one of our elder, elderly ladies' homes, and, and she came out. And we noticed when we were there, we noticed that her, her yard was knee-high, the grass. And uh, she hadn't been to church in months. We, you know, we didn't know there was a need. Or when I have called her, she didn't mention it. But we went, and we saw that need. And uh, her lawn care guy hadn't been able to get in touch with him. So we were like, well, we, if it hasn't been cut by Wednesday... You know, we're coming. So that's what we did. Me and uh, Pastor Daniel loaded up the, the uh, trailer there, took the lawnmower, and we cut her grass. But when we got through cutting her grass, you know, uh, went to her door, let her know. She, she said, uh, she said, well, y'all, come on in. I said, no. I said, are you sure? I said, do you, do you want us to wear a mask? Or She said, no, no, y'all come on in. We can, we can distance ourselves. And so we went in there and we sat down and just, I mean, I think we talked for an hour. It was beautiful. She was catching us up on what was going on in her family, what had been going on in her life and things like that. And it was just, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful blessing to her and to us. But when, when, I, when I left, the reason I'm, I'm even saying that is because, you know, before, before we went in there, I asked her, I said, what, what, what are you comfortable with? Why? Because for the gospel's sake. Somebody say, for the gospel's sake. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want to share this story, and then we're going we're gonna to end worshiping the Lord through communion. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I heard of this story when I was in Bible school. And when I was when I was meditating on, on this message today, the Holy Spirit brought it back to my remembrance. And so I, I, I went and looked it up. But uh, it's an interesting story. Powerful. In, in, not, in 1732, way back there, 1732, 
there was these uh, two men of God, these two missionaries, that felt called to minister to African slaves in the Indies. And these two men were from uh, Germany. Come on, Josh Brand. Josh spent some time in Germany here last year. So, uh, but these two guys, uh, their names were um, John Leonard Dober and David Nitschman. Did I say that right? Nitschman. So, <laughs> so these guys felt the call of God to go minister to slaves in, in the Indies. So when, when they went to get permission to go do that, they were denied being able to go and minister the gospel. So what these guys did was they found a slave owner in that area and they sold themselves into slavery so that they could go to the Indies and minister to the gospel to these slaves. As they were getting on the boat, as they looked at their families, now a slave that they chose to be, so that they could get the gospel to a group of people. As they were waving by to their families, to their spouses, to their children, to the, this is what they said. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. And that has become my heart pertaining to what the Lord has shown me where people are with this. I want the lamb that was slain to receive the reward of his suffering. And what, what is that? Souls. One is that people being born again. One, one is that people uh, uh, entering into the family of God. And the only way they can is for them to have open ears to what I have to say so that I can preach the gospel into their ears and live out the gospel in front of them so that they can experience Christ through my life. Amen. If you will stand to your feet all over the room. I am so glad that you tuned in to the message today. I pray that God's word produces much fruit in your life. You know, God is doing amazing things through this church. And I would love for you to prayerfully consider getting involved. You can go to our website, freepointchurch.community and see all the amazing opportunities to get involved with what God is doing here at Free Point Church. Also on our website, there is a form for prayer requests. We would love to pray with you, pray for you concerning the desires of your heart. If you would like to get involved here at Free Point by giving financially, you can do that as well on our website. We are excited about God's beautiful plan for your life and look forward to connecting with you again at our next online service. God bless you.